What's going on guys? My name is Derek. Welcome to my channel Euro Superbike Life. Today we are bleeding the rear brakes on my Ducati Panigale Speciale. <laughs> Welcome back guys. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty pretty short unlike my last several videos but before we get into it let's jump over to my desk and take a look at some of the tools that we're going to need. Okay we're over here at my desk. Let's take a look at some of the tools that we are going to need. You'll first need a 3 8 ratchet, 3 8 extension, 6 millimeter allen socket, 5 millimeter allen socket or t-handle, a 11 millimeter wrench, or a 7 16 flare nut wrench like the one here, brake fluid, and bleeder valve connectors, bleeder hose, and a container for the spent brake fluid. Now the things that I'm going to show you now are some optional items that you don't necessarily need but make things a lot easier. Manual vacuum pump, pneumatic vacuum pump, feeler gauges. You'll also need a rear stand for the hub side so that you can take the rear wheel off the bike. You can do this with the rear wheel on the bike. I wouldn't recommend it. And you can do this on the side stand. I also don't recommend it. Getting the rear of the bike up off the ground so that you can remove the rear wheel will make your life a lot easier. Trust me. And if you happen to have a lift, use a lift. All right, guys, before we get started, I wanted to show you this Stalbus. I think that's pronounced, you pronounce it Stalbus, Stalbus. Um, Bleeder valve. What's so special about this Stalbus bleeder valve is, so there are two threaded areas. So there's a threaded area here on the bottom that threads into your caliber. Simil very similar or exactly the same as the speed bleeders. However, what's different between this and the speed bleeders is there's a valve up here at the top that opens. So you, once this is screwed into your caliper here on the bottom, you never have to unscrew this. So you don't have to worry about air slipping past the threads here, which is very common on all of your stock or standard uh, bleeders, as well as the speed bleeders. Uh, you have to loosen this body up, and air tends to get past these threads here. Um, it makes it difficult to bleed. With this, you don't have that. So once this body is threaded into the caliper, you'll loosen this top here. You'll notice there's another nut, uh, eight millimeter here, 10 millimeters here. You'll loosen this, and this will allow that check valve to move up and down, and there's an O-ring in there which doesn't allow air in or out, uh, also doesn't allow fluid in or out from there. So you don't have to worry about this or air leaking past the threads here because there's an O-ring in here. Uh, again, this is different from the speed bleeders. The other problem I had with speed bleeders is that um, sometimes that check valve wouldn't open and close properly and it, the bleeder just would not work at all. So um, I'm hoping this one works. So we're gonna install this uh, while we're bleeding the rear brakes and see how it works. All right, so before we get started, guys, some of you may have noticed that the Rizomo Reservoir that we installed last week or a few days ago, along with the Tigon tubing, uh, is not here. So I reinstalled the stock tubing with the stock reservoir. And the reason that I did that is, so I wasn't happy about this little metal connector and how it sits here and mounts. Um, that was minor. I could have lived with that. Um, but I didn't particularly like that because it didn't sit in there properly. The other thing is, um, is that I forgot that this whole area here gets super hot. Too hot, in fact, for the Tigon tubing. So the Tigon tubing got really close to my metal cap here that I replaced as the aftermarket unit. This is metal, and the Tigon tubing dipped down and got really close to this and actually started to melt. It was actually touching here a little bit, and it melted. And there was another huge bulge right here that wasn't touching anything, just got hot and began to melt. Luckily, uh, I was pretty close to my brother's place, and I was able to get home before it did too much damage. It did, in fact, rupture, and I had some leaking here, which I cleaned up, and I was able to uh, uh, temporarily fix that up to get the bike home. But the Tigon tubing did not live well in here. It just got too hot in this area um for the tubing and it started to melt in fact you can see the the brake line that goes down under the uh exhaust here is actually covered in a uh, protective heat wrap this probably should be as well uh although it'd be kind of ugly but um i guess they figured because it's on the outside and getting in the area of a lot of airflow that it probably didn't need it but i went and reinstalled uh the stock setup i'm not sure i'm going to go back to uh this Oops. 
I'm not sure that I'm going to go back to this Rizoma unit. Again, um, it doesn't sit well in here, and I really don't like that. And plus, the line has to come down under it, which puts it really, really close to the engine case. And I'm not sure any uh, tubing would live well there. And this isn't that big of a deal, so I'll probably leave that as is. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you what was so special about uh, bleeding the rear brakes here um, is that it's not overly different than any other sport bike. There is, a, um, there is an ABS pump right in this area here. And as you can see, based on that, all of the rear brakes are, are pretty linear uh, with regards to uh, the rear master cylinder, the reservoir, and the caliper. There's not a whole lot of elevation change as opposed to the front brake where the master cylinder and reservoir are up here. Calipers are down here and the ABS pump is somewhere in the middle. So uh, for the front, there's a line that goes from the master cylinder from, to the ABS pump, from the ABS pump to the calipers. Same here with the rear. There's a line that goes from the rear master cylinder to the ABS pump then from the ABS pump all the way back here to the rear caliper. So there's a lot more area for air to hide and um, gravity is not your friend here like on the front. So it makes it challenging to get air out of here. And I had more trouble getting air out of the rear brakes on this bike more than any of my other sport bikes, uh, those both with and without ABS. And what I wanted to show you was a trick that I found that almost instantly worked for me. And I wanna show you that right now. So as you can see here, the caliper is fairly flat and uh, you can see where the, um, where the, the, I mean, go from this way. Here you can see where the fluid enters. It's entering at the lowest point here. And then you can see the, uh, the bleeder valve, not at the lowest point because the piston is up here. But what happens is fluid comes in here, also air, by the way, when air gets trapped, and it'll get trapped in the piston up in here. So when you're trying to bleed, uh, you can get fluid out of here to get to, you know, fluid to come down, but air doesn't like to travel downwards. Air is lighter than fluid, it wants to travel up. And I found that air was getting trapped in this piston here. And the way I resolved that was like this. So, you are going to grab your 3 8 uh, extension along with your six mil Allen. And you are going to, you can see that there are two mounting bolts here, six mil here, it's pretty dark, I'm sorry about the lighting here. Six mil here and six mil here. You're going to remove this bolt and loosen this bolt. So we're gonna go right through here. We're gonna loosen that one. And now we're gonna come over here and we are going to remove this one. Now that it's loose, I really take this out by hand. switch this. Now what we want to do is swing this down vertical and then lock it in place with the bolt that we just loosened. Like that. And then we're going to grab our feeler gauges here and this can technically be anything that's of similar width to fit in between your rear brake pads. What we're going to use these feeler gauges for is we're going to simulate the width of your rotor here because as you can see we're only on the rotor by a little bit and once we start pushing on that rear um, brake pedal we, we want to get even pressure here so uh, we're just going to use this to uh, fit in between the pads and i like using feeler gauges because obviously you can grab so many that will fit in there and then it will stay you slide those up like that and we got a nice thickness here that's similar width to our rear brake rotor and we have full pad coverage so now we don't have to worry about those pads pushing out any weird kind of way or, or unevenly or so forth so before i start the bleeding process unlike you unless you have a stablis i have to install my stablis speed bleeder here uh, which means i got to remove the old 
bleeder valve. So grab your 11 mil or your 7 16 or what have you uh, flared nut wrench. And we're going to come over here and we are going to remove our valve here. So you're probably going to want to grab some paper towels. Where's my speed bleeder? Okay, over here. Loosen that up and we are literally just going to take it out. And put the other one in. And I'm just going to tighten that on like so. Clean that up. I'm going to grab some brake clean here. So brake fluid is very corrosive, particularly to paint. So we want to make sure that we don't leave that sitting on any surfaces whatsoever. Now with the caliper mounted vertically like this, we can see that fluid comes in at the lowest point of the caliper. Air and fluid will have a natural tendency to rise even up past the piston and then out the highest point of the caliper, which is the bleed screw here. So any air should not have a problem getting stuck here in the piston or anywhere in the caliper. It should come in here and have a natural tendency to rise up and then exit out the caliper here at the highest point. All right, guys, so it's time to start bleeding the brake. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to grab your container and connect the hose. If you're going to use a manual brake bleeder, uh, you'll just connect the hose to the end of it and then connect the end, the end of the hose to the cup. Um, if you're going to use your pneumatic bleeder, then you'll get that set up and you'll get that installed. But basically, we'll take our cup with our line over here and... I have a little clip here that I keep the cup in place with. And then we'll run this line to our bleeder valve. So we'll come up under here and connect it like so, like that. If you're using your stock brake bleeder valve that we took off, you'll want to grab your 11 mil wrench or your 7 16 uh, flared nut wrench. Uh, I'm going to use an 8 mil because that's what the, my new bleeder valve has. But you'll grab one of those and you'll put that on your valve. All right, now we remove the cap off of our fluid reservoir. If your reservoir is not full, now is the time to grab your brake fluid. I use Motul 660. Uh, and fill that. You want to make sure that this stays full. You do not want it to drop below the line so that when you start pumping, you'll suck air in. So make sure that fluid stays in here. And then basically, uh, the, the process is like you've done any other time. So the standard process would be you'll pump the brake lever, hold this lever down, open the valve, close the valve. When you open the valve, this lever will go down some more. That's completely stock or standard. Um, and then you'll close the valve and then you'll pump some more. When you do that, the lever in the reservoir, or excuse me, the fluid level in the reservoir will go down. And you'll continue to do that until you feel this firm up and is stiff. Um, with my new valve here, I don't need to open and close the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this a half turn, and then I can just pump this freely. It makes it a one person job. So I can open this a half turn, I can pump, 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 add more fluid as I need to, pump, 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 and then when I feel this stiff, then I can close this once I think all the air is out. That check valve is going to open and close all by its lonesome. So as I push down, that valve is going to open, and as I let, release it, that valve is going to close and no air is going to get in. Again, it's going to make this a one-person job. And seeing we mounted our caliper in a vertical sense here, um, the fluid will enter in the bottom, air and uh, fluid will come out of the top, or the spent fluid, I should say, will come out of the top, and air won't get trapped in here like I was talking about earlier. So let's do that now. So I'll go ahead and open this a complete half turn.
So now that's completely open. And now what I can do is I can just pump this and what you'll see is the level will, the level, fluid level will go down here and it'll start to exit out the tube there. And you can see fluid is exiting the tube here. And you can also see that our fluid level is going down here. So you see it's getting low. So I'll stop there. I'll add some more fluid. Like so. And I'll continue to pump here. And you'll see that fluid will continue to exit and enter the cup. You see we got a couple of air bubbles there. And then at some point I'll say, okay, I think that's good. And then I will close this valve. Close that valve all the way. And then I'll pump this a few times and determine whether the pressure is good. And the pressure is good. And now I'll just top that up. You'll see we're at minimum. So I will top that up to somewhere around the max level. Right about there. And now we can put our cap back on. Now don't forget this little boot here that comes with your cap. So don't forget this. Put that on, put the cap on. And that is it. And again, now we'll just, now we can remove the stuff here. We can put our caliper back in the normal spot. So now we can remove our uh, feeler gauges. We can grab our six mil Allen with the extension and our ratchet, remove our hose. Let that drain all the way down in there so we don't make a mess. And loosen up our hose, or excuse me, loosen up our caliper bolt, and then slide the other one back into place. Tighten these up to torque specs. If you want the specs, feel free to look them up. I don't know them offhand. I'll just snug them up right now. And that is it. Now our caliper is back in place. We can rotate it, press the lever, see that it stops. See that we make sure that it feels good. And now we can throw the wheel uh, and tire back on here. And that is it. So uh, let's wrap this up, shall we? All right, guys, well, that is a wrap for this video. Hopefully you found it useful and informative. Um, like, comment, subscribe, or smash it if you didn't like the video. Until next time, guys, take care.